Hi, this is Matthew, and I'd like to talk with you about AppImage as a way to run or use software on Linux without having to install it. Um, so I've written a little bit about this on uh, my website, RetroEdge.Tech. Um, just going over some of the things that AppImage is. I, I've known about AppImage quite a long time, and I've been thinking about different ways of installing software. Um, on Linux and kind of comparing them, comparing flat pack, comparing snap, uh, an app image. An app image has really caught my attention again recently because there's quite a few advantages uh, to it. The, the big one is that you don't actually have to be an administrator of the computer and also that the uh, software that you take with you, you can put it on a flash drive or have it on a a network share and so what I plan on doing is having a folder in my next cloud that syncs files uh, between my computers that just has my applications that I'd like to use and then I can run them directly from there and I've tested this out a little bit and so far it seems to be working okay with, with some caveats um, so well I guess I'd like to kind of go through and talk about how you would install software uh, normally on Linux. I'm here in a Linux Mint virtual machine and I'll start the menu here and I'll go to the software manager um, and it'll think for a little bit um, and then up oh, here we go and I can look here and I, let's say there's a particular piece of software that I'd like to install. Um, so let's just do a search for Gparted um, which is an application for working with disks. It's going to search through there. I can click on it and then I can click install. And uh, at some point, yeah, it's going to pop up and ask me for my password. I'll type that in. Authenticate. And it's installing. It's pulling it from the repository. Uh, Linux Mint shares repositories um, with Ubuntu. Uh, or if you're using Linux Mint Debian Edition, um, with Debian. Um, so now I can click on the menu and type gparted and uh, or start to type it and that's highlighted in search. I can hit enter um, and it, it, this particular application because it's dealing with disks needs root privileges so I need to enter my password there as well and um, then it's seeing the virtual disk of my virtual machine uh, right here which is uh, 20 gigabytes. So that's how you would install software through the software manager or software center in say Linux Mint. It's very similar on Ubuntu and many other Linux distributions. We could go to the command line and uh, from the command line, uh, Linux Mint like Debian and Ubuntu uses apt. So I could say sudo apt install neofetch. And then it's going to ask for my administrative password again because we're installing a piece of software on the system. And oh, I had already installed the NeoFetch. Well, let's give an example of how you would uninstall that again. So sudo apt remove NeoFetch. So this is uh, again using sudo. Um, and I'm going to remove this from my system. And then, boom, there we go. Uh, and now it's removing that. Um, from my system. So if I type in which neo fetch, it's not going to return anything because it's not installed in the system. And uh, if I press the up arrow, I can go through the uh, commands that I've most recently typed and I can go back to sudo apt install neo fetch. Going to grab that, it's going to pull it down from the network from the repositories, from the Ubuntu repositories. Um, and then it's going to install it on my system. And now when I say which neo fetch, it will show me that I do have that installed on my system. And what does neo fetch do? Um, it shows me um, information about my system. Uh, so you can see that here, it just kind of prints out in the terminal um, uh, a summary of my system. Um, so here's the version of Linux Mint that I'm using, here's the kernel that I'm using, etc. So you can see that essentially 
I can install software through either the software manager um, or through the command line and then install software on my Linux system. App image is different. It, you just download the file, make it executable, and run it. There's no need to install. Here's a quote that I pulled from App Image's website. Um, and uh, here's their website here. Uh, yeah, it's appimage.org. You read a lot more about it, um, read some quotes, some how to information. But I'll be showing you, I'll be demonstrating how easy this is. And just to give an example, um, so when you install software from repositories, uh, that can be a little bit older software. It can be software that's meant to match or work with the rest of the system. It's tested with that system. Um, and in certain cases, it can be several versions um, older uh, than what the latest release is. And most of the time, that's fine. That's not, that's not a big deal. But you may want to use a particular version, and that's kind of hard to do with a Linux operating system because the repositories, if you stay up to date, well, then you're going to use the version that's up to date with your particular version of Linux. Um, so I've, I've updated this system um, after doing the install. And let's say I want to open LibreOffice Writer. So launch LibreOffice Writer here. And I, let's go see what version it is. I press Help. I press About LibreOffice. And we see that the version of LibreOffice that comes with and is fully up to date um, with Linux Mint 19.3, um, so the latest version of Linux Mint, um, is 6.0.73. Right here, so 6.0, um, and at the time of this recording, the latest version of LibreOffice is 6.4. So you can see this is a little bit behind. That's not a big deal. Most of the time, older versions of the Office Suite will work just fine. But let's say that I want to use the QR code generator tool that's built into the newest version of LibreOffice in LibreOffice 6.4. And so in that case, I wouldn't have that feature in here. So enter app image. Um, if you do a search for LibreOffice app image, you, you'll come up with this page, and I've already downloaded um, this version um, right here. And we can go to my downloads folder. And I've got the LibreOffice in there. And then I've already done this, but you'd have to go to the properties, permissions, and make sure that allow executing files program is checked and then we can just double click it i don't have to install i don't have to run sudo um and libreoffice launches and but this version that came from the app image which is just one file one one file to download this is now version 6.4 the latest version and does have that feature that i might be interested in using What's cool about this is that, you know, 6.4 is in the app image, and then um, the other version that's installed with, with uh, you know, from the repositories of 6.0 is, is still here, and I can even run them at the same time. I can go here, and we'll double click on this. It's gonna launch this version of LibreOffice. I'll go to Calc Spreadsheet here, just so we have them on two. Um, different things. You can see uh, LibreOffice here is 6.0. Go over here into the app image LibreOffice and it's 6.4 running at the same time on the same system. You can even have different versions of the same software as app images. So if there's not, they're not coming from your repository, but you have different versions as app images, you can have them running on your same system um, you know, either, you know, you want to do some testing or you want to do it in a particular thing or maybe something that you're doing works better in this version and then something else that you're doing works better in that version. You can actually have both images uh, or both at, at versions of that application as app images. Well, something that I'm pretty excited about is um, I upload my videos to Library, which is a video publication and sharing uh, platform. And 
the uh, library software is now available as an app image download. This is fairly recently, um, as of January 2020, uh, late in January, they announced this and it's available. I just noticed it just this week. Um, and so now if you go to library.com slash Linux, um, you can download .app image. We'll click on that. Um, we're going to want to check the save file radio button, not um, open it up. Um, and then we'll click OK. And it's going to download it to our downloads folder. It's pretty much done already. Um, and then I'll go over here to our downloads folder. And I've got this library app image. Now, if I just try to click it right away, it's going to give me this unknown file type. What do you want to do with it? Which program do you want to open this with? That's because I haven't changed the permissions yet. So if I right click on it, go to properties, permissions, check the execute, allow executing this file as a program. And then I close that. And now when I double click it, it's going to launch library. This may take a little bit to start up the first time. And um, and the little choppiness of the video is because I'm in a virtual machine. And here you can see that the library app has loaded up and I didn't install it. It's not installed on my system. If I go to see which is in my path, the applications here, if I type which LBRY, it's, it's not installed in my system at all. But um, I, I can launch it. I can just double click on it and launch it. It's like a portable app. Um, let's see, is it already running? Yeah, there it is, right there, it's already running. Um, so uh, for me, Retro Edge Tech, if I search for that, you can find me, my channel is there. I've got a few followers already, published a few videos, um, and uh, I highly recommend that you check out Library and you can download it as an app image on most versions of Linux. Um, uh, the things that I've tried, anything with the kernel 5, um, Linux kernel 5.0 and higher has seemed to work fine for me, uh, but I did have a problem where the app image for library didn't load and launch in a, the Linux Debian, uh, Linux Mint Debian edition. Uh, so that had a 4.19 Linux kernel and it didn't load that. But the LibreOffice app image worked fine in, in the Debian um, uh, Linux Mint edition that I was using. Um, some other people that I recommend you, that you follow uh, on library uh, is Lunduke and um, here it's going to be trying to load the video there. Um, and it's going to start playing already, so I'll click pause. But uh, Brian Lunduk, um, click on here. You can see um, his channel. Highly recommend that you follow him. And then the other person that I recommend that you follow is DJ Ware, and his username is Cruxwork. And here's DJ Ware. I, he does some great stuff, uh, Linux overviews. Excellent, excellent videos. I highly recommend that you follow him as well. Um, so it really is that easy to download software and just use it. Oh yeah, and so the cool thing about library is, is unlike YouTube, uh, when you start watching a video or when you watch a video, it downloads the video file to your computer and you get a copy of it. Um, which is not like YouTube where you, you know you have to use a special tool or something if you want to save one of their videos to your computer. Here you just click on the video in library and it saves it right to your computer, which is really cool. Um, so that's how easy it is to use app image. And I've been really impressed. I'm going to be continuing to play with this and see how it works with me for portable apps. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.